Bibles. Some of you have uh, uh, devices, <laughs> electronic devices. Uh, to open your Bibles, whatever you have, wherever you have your Bible. Uh, Matthew 16. Matthew chapter 16. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Uh, I didn't know, I didn't ask Johannes which version you use. Uh, I heard you pray in King James Version, and, and actually we have a Spanish-speaking Bible which is very similar to the King James. Um, sometimes I preach from the NIV, sometimes I preach from uh, the Good News, but today I wanted to preach from the NRSV, the New Revised Standard Version. And let's go to verse 13. And if I go too fast, if I speak too fast, that's when my accent starts coming up and you may not understand what I'm saying. Don't worry, I just maybe raise your hand and, and I'll understand that I'm going too fast. Chapter 16 of Matthew, verse 13. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, some others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of John, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I'll tell you, you are Peter, and of, and of this rock, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades, or hell, maybe, maybe your, your version, will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind, on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. They he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your goodness and kindness this morning, and I pray, Lord, that you use me to give a word of comfort, of exhortation, and consolation to your people. This I pray in your name. Amen. Jesus apparently wanted to keep a secret that he was the Messiah. I don't know when you're when you get something new. I can think of you at school. Because I used to be like that. When I was at school, when I was 50 years old. Um, my cousin got, no, I, I, was, I was 11, he was 15, I was 11. My cousin got an earring, but not, not a cut through earring. He got an earring, a pressing earring. So he took it to school and he showed it off to his friends. But I also wanted to take it to school and show it off to my friends. And I took my earring to school, and the teacher said, give me that, and took it away from me, and never gave it back. But the thing is that I wanted to show people that I, that I had an earring. I wanted to be special. And Jesus is the Messiah, the Savior of the whole world. Yet, He didn't want everybody to know that. Isn't that a bad thing or a good thing? It's a bit confusing, isn't it? Because you are going to save us from sin. You are going to give us eternal life. Yet you don't want everybody to know. Because a lot of people say, Oh yeah, Jesus, Jesus is the Messiah today. Oh yeah, Jesus is, is whoever he says he is. But that's where it stops. <coughs> if you ask Muslim who Jesus is, Oh yes, he's the great Messiah. Who's gonna, uh, he's that great prophet who's going to come back. Because they believe Jesus is coming back. He's going to come back to judge the living and the dead. That's what they believe. And that sounds very much like what we believe, doesn't it? 
Wow, that's why you have all these Christians or so-called Christians who become Muslims. I was listening to a radio uh, program yesterday, uh, National, Public, uh, National Public Radio from the U.S., how this woman went to Christian seminary and she heard a voice, not a voice, you know, the, the, <laughs> the program on TV, but she heard a voice saying, pick up the Quran and read it. Well, she did, and she became a Muslim. In a Christian seminary, where you become, where you study, if you want to be a pastor, or you want to be a Bible teacher, that's what you do. And she said, God showed me this. And my question to her would be, so where do you, so, so, so how do you do when Jesus says, I am the only way to the Father? You can have some people who go to seminary who have never read the whole Bible. I ask you this morning, and you don't have to answer me, but have you read the whole Bible? How many times you read the whole Bible? It's a challenge, isn't it? I remember, I, I once I said to my kids, okay, we're going to read a whole book of the Bible. And they went, oh! <laughs> the Bible's so big. The Bible's so hard to read. And I took it to... Philemon. <coughs> and you know how many verses Philemon are? No? Less than 20? And you read a whole book for the Bible. It's easy. If you start with the little things, when you see it, like we're going, a lot of us are going to the, to the Royal Hotel afterwards, and they put a big piece of steak in front of you. <laughs> you, don't, you don't start with big bites, don't you? Ah. <laughs> you start with little bites. And that's how we should Read the Bible, bit by bit. When I became a Christian, well, I, I, was, I was raised a Baptist. It was weird because my mom took me to the Catholic church in the morning because we were in the Catholic run country, so we must go to Catholic church or else. Or they cut us, they cut off our lights or they cut off our gas. Or they, I mean, that's how some Mexicans are suffering today. There, uh, there was just a, a 20, 20 Protestants who were kicked out of this town in Mexico because they are Protestants, because they, they don't want to pray to Mary, because they don't want to uh, take part of their own festivals, so they kick them out, and they kill one of them. So some Christians are still suffering. So after, after, after the Mass, they, he will finally go to the, to the Baptist Church, after, and we will go very quickly so people wouldn't see that we went to the Baptist Church. So we were crypto Baptists. And after that, in the afternoon, we had a maid, and she used to take me to the Pentecostal church. Pentecostal church. <laughs> so during my whole day, I used to be at church. That's how some, some of us grow up. And being a Christian, it's not, a, it's not an easy thing sometimes. You have to stand up. You have to stand up for the truth. And the truth is that Jesus is the Messiah, but some people believe that the Messiah is this or that. Some people have Jesus in their mind as their money provider all the time. You know, if you go to church, you'll be rich. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I should be a millionaire then. I've been in church all my life. <laughs> if, you don't, if you go to church, you will never get sick. Well, it's very cold, you know, you must, get, you must get a cold. If you are a Christian, if you go to church, nothing, will ever, nothing bad will ever happen to you. And Jesus never said that. Remember the, the Bible verse that says, God helps those who help themselves? Do you remember that verse? No. <laughs> because there's no such thing in the Bible. But people outside say that. You know, President Obama, you will think that those people who are in the White House, they are so smart, yeah, they are in the White House. If you think, uh, I, I don't know if you're a politician, so I don't think uh, Obama is very smart. He's very smart. And you think that people who are around him are very smart, but once uh, the Secretary of, of the Press, <coughs> in, in the, you know, the, the guy who talks, 
for the policies. He said that, as the Bible says, God helps those who help themselves. And then the, there was one reporter said, no, the Bible doesn't say that. <laughs> Give me the verse. Even very smart people can get it wrong because they don't read their scripture. Or because they don't know anything about scripture. And Jesus once asked the disciples, who do people say I am? And this is very important to see. Let's go to the verse. Let's go to, to, to the scripture now. Verse 13. Now when Jesus came into the district of Swan Hill, <laughs> to the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, and look at this, he went into a district named after who? Caesar. And who was Caesar? The emperor. <clears throat> the man who was in charge of the whole Roman Empire. The man who could do anything he wanted. <clears throat> he used to be called Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And who does the Bible call Lord of Lords and King of Kings? Jesus. So, right here you can see a conflict. I mean, the Bible writer, a lot, a lot of people think, oh, uh, the people who wrote the Bible, they went, oh, 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 and started writing. No, they know what they're writing. They have a story to tell. They're telling a story. They're building it up, building it up, building it up. So, this guy, or Matthew, says, now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And again, Son of Man. What does Son of Man mean to you? What does Son of Man say about Jesus? And a lot of people think, oh yeah, Son of Man means that Jesus is a human being. Doesn't it? That's what it sounds like. And in the, in the New Testament or in the Gospels, you only find the word Son of Man in Jesus' lips. He is the only one who calls himself Son of Man. And if you go to the book of Daniel with me, let's go to the book of Daniel, chapter, um, chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7, verse 13. I'm going to ask Roger to, to read it, please. Which version? Uh, <laughs> that's showing you. Okay. <laughs> any version, any version, that's okay. Okay, I continued watching in the night visions, and I saw one like the Son of Man coming with clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient of Days and was escorted before him. And then 14. Hmm. And listen to this. He was given authority to rule and glory in a kingdom so that those of every people, nation and language should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away and his kingdom is one that will not be destroyed. Ah. You heard that. So, son of man, what does that mean? Does it mean that he's, that he's uh, a... Um, son of man. A, like my son, David, or <coughs> Johannes' son, Samuel, or your son. Doesn't mean that. It means that the Son of Man, he comes from heaven. See how, how Jesus' understanding of Son of Man is, and how we understand Son of Man. So Jesus says, who is the Son of Man? Who do people say? And people still don't get it. If people don't get it, what do they answer? They answer, some say John the Baptist. But others say Elijah. And still others, Jeremiah. You know, John the Baptist was killed. Remember? He got, his, his head was cut off. Because um, somebody had made a dance. Do you remember that? Herod's wife didn't like John. Because John used to say, you are, you are insane. You took your brother's wife. So Herodias, her, uh, her daughter, who, who was, what was her name? Salome. Was Salome. It? In what verse is that? <laughs> no, there's no such verse 
the Bible doesn't say her name was Salome, but we know because of Josephus, because of a Christian historian, that's why we know her name, Salome. So she danced, and then Herod said, I'll give you half my kingdom. And what did she ask for? Give me a plate ahead of John the Baptist. So John the Baptist was dead. Jeremiah was dead. Elijah, well, he went to the, he didn't die. Elijah didn't die. He went up in heaven in a car of, not in a Toyota, chariots of fire. He didn't go up in a, in a Lexus or a Mercedes. He went up in, in heaven's brand of car. So he went up there and he didn't die. And others say one of the prophets. So people always come up with their own understanding of Jesus, who Jesus is. I don't know, at work, people tell you, oh, Jesus, he was a good guy. Jesus was just a, 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 a teacher of goodness. He just wanted to show people how we should behave with one another. And, and sometimes I go, when, they, when people tell me that, well, okay, Jesus once saw that there were people selling at the temple. They were selling stuff at the temple. What did Jesus do? He, he, he made a, uh, what do you call it? A whip. And whip them out of the temple. Is he a good example then? <laughs> imagine, imagine Johannes being the pastor here, and he sees somebody selling something here, and he gets gets a whip. And <laughs> <laughs> That's not a good thing to do. We stay quiet, you know. Okay, brother, next time maybe maybe sell it outside the church, not inside the church. That's how we would do it. That's how I would do it. I had that thing done in my church once that these people came in and they were church members and they were selling food in the church and, and we were also selling food in the church so we could get money to buy a, to, to get a temple going. And I had to have a quiet war with them. And then I, I, then I told them because I, they were friends of mine. I said, you know, I should get a whip and whip you out. <laughs> but I didn't do it. Because, but Jesus, see, when people say Jesus came to show us how to be good people. And he did, but that wasn't his main plan. Still, others thought that Jesus was going to be like Elijah. What did Elijah do? He did a lot of miracles. And he <coughs> war against the enemies of Israel. And still, others said that Jesus was like Jeremiah. And what did Jeremiah do? He mostly cried all the time. <laughs> oh, Lord, why are you going to destroy Jerusalem? But Jesus, he just wants to know what everybody else thinks. But then, this is the main question. But, who do you say I am? And that's the main question this morning. We know what people outside the church say about Jesus. We know that every single um, time when we have Easter, they said, maybe Jesus didn't exist. And see, if somebody comes to you and says, Jesus didn't exist, I get mad. <laughs> because go and ask any university, any historical department of any university on the world, in the world, and they will say, Jesus did exist. Some people say, we only know Jesus from the Gospels. From from, uh, from, four from, four, from four people that they were with him, so we don't we can trust them because we don't we cannot trust the gospels because they were written by people who who wanted to make Jesus known, and they were written how many years after? If you have seen that the Vichy Code and all these other things, they were written hundreds of years after Jesus. Hundreds of years after his life. You know, you, who, who, that, who knows here um, Alexander the Great? Who knows Alexander the Great? Yeah, you know Alexander the Great? Yes? Well, he was a big general, big, from, from Macedonia, not Greece, Macedonia. <laughs> I used to come from the Sunshine, there were a lot of Macedonians there. If you say he's Greek, they boo you. <laughs> so Alexander the Great lived before Jesus. Like let's say 400 Jesus, 400, 400 years before Jesus. He was a great general, 
He conquered all the way from Greece to India. He was a, he was a very smart man. But we don't have manuscripts about him. But after 300 years after his death. So nobody ever took the time to write about his life. Only 300 years after he died. Yet, with Jesus, we have manuscripts, or we know we have manuscripts, books, you know, pieces of paper sometimes, that are written 40 years after he died. So who are you going to believe more? Somebody who wrote 40 years before this happened, or somebody who, who, who wrote 300 years after? Nobody's alive. Nobody can see, I, I saw him. I know what he did. So we can be assured that what these people wrote is what they saw. They claimed themselves to be eyewitnesses. Another thing is that people say, oh, I wasn't there. You were there when, when Jesus was here, so why should I believe? Why should I believe that, uh, that there was this, this, name, this name called Jesus that he did this and that? My answer to that is, and this is the answer the apologists do, the people who defend the faith, is that, okay, were you here in 1901 when Australia became an independent nation? Anybody here? Was anybody here in 1901 living and saw the people signing Declaration of Independence, let's say, or Declaration of Commonwealth of Australia? No one's here. But you believe it, eh? But we believe it. Because it's been written down in history. So the Gospels are the same. They're history. The issue is if people want to accept it as history. Like in the US, some people still don't recognize that Missouri is a state. So when they see the flag and they, pick, they see 50, uh, 50 uh, stars, they say, they complain. Some people say, I don't take Alaska as a state, I don't take uh, Missouri like a state. But it's a fact of life. They can complain all they want, but Jesus existed. <clears throat> so those are the things that we hear outside. Just, just, to, just to close this down, Muslims say that we Christians have corrupted the Bible. They say that we haven't translated it properly. They say that we have changed all these places so, so Jesus comes out as that one and only God, but Jesus never said it? That's what they say. And the answer to that can be this. Okay, Jesus lived in the first century, which is year 30, year 30, 33, 34. Islam came to existence 600 years after. So who are we going to believe? In court, who do you believe when you go to court? Do you believe the eyewitnesses? Or do you believe somebody told me that somebody told him that somebody told him that somebody told him that this is true? What are you going to do? No, of course not. <laughs> You're going to believe whoever said, I was there, I saw it. And this is what the Bible says. This is what Matthew saying. Hey, I saw it. And this is what Peter says in the book of Peter. And, and, I remember the Peter, and if you, if you read the book of Mark, the Gospel of Mark, the Gospel of Mark is supposed to have been um, Peter's uh, recollection of what Jesus went through. And you see that when Jesus goes up on the mountain and he becomes white, whiter than anything you can see, and light is coming out of him, he looks like, I don't know if you've ever seen uh, Star Wars, uh, um, <laughs> what do you call it? Um, Star Wars, the second one, no, the, the, the old ones, um, the, the Return of the Jedi, when they, when they get uh, Han Solo out of Kryptonites, and light starts coming out of him. So that's how they saw Jesus. Light was coming out of him. And then Peter, in his letter that he wrote, First Peter, he says, I saw him. We saw his glory. He says, I saw it. And because I saw it, I know it's true. 
So who are you going to believe? A Muslim who comes and tells you, you Christians, you corrupted the text, who are you going to believe what the text says? And then Jesus says, and, and then um, Simon Peter answered, verse 16, you are the Messiah. You are the Messiah. The Son of the living God. Oh, now this sounds Son of the living God. You know who's the son of the living God in the Roman Empire? Caesar. Caesar is the son of the living God. Who, who remembers the pharaohs? Pharaohs? You remember the, doing school? Egypt? And the pharaohs were called sons of God too. And he was a God, living, living God. That's what they believed. The pharaoh was a living God. And then the Romans took over that way of thinking. The Romans said, oh yes, uh, the Caesar was the one who first called himself son of the living God. And then you see Jesus going to Caesar Philippi, <laughs> Caesarea Philippi, a city built on the honor of the emperor who claimed himself to be the son of God. And then you see Peter saying, you are the son. You are the real ruler of the earth. You are the real boss here. Not the guy in Rome. That's, that's what we need to hear sometimes. It's not what camera takes, the decisions that camera takes that will really, really drive our lives. It's what the ruler of the universe what he has done on the cross, that's what's going to define our lives. We get mad at what, whatever happens in camera or, or in Spring Street in Victoria. We get mad. Or I don't know, the Council Theater in Song Hill. We get mad because of the decisions they make and we may not agree. But we have to realize that at the end of the day, they're not in charge. The one in charge is Jesus. We may not like it when we do bad at school. Oh, what? I didn't get the, I didn't get the A I wanted. <laughs> or I missed out on this sport thing or whatever. We may not like it when I work, things don't work out. I'm learning a lot of things in my new job. And I said, wow. And the boss doesn't like it when I don't know something. You may feel bad when kids or your brothers, or your sisters, or your parents are going to strife and you don't know what to do, the doctor doesn't have an answer. But we know whom we have believed in. In Jesus, the Son of Man, who doesn't come from the earth, he comes from heaven. And who is the Son of God, the ruler of all the earth. Who's Jesus for you? <clears throat> who do you say, who do you say Jesus is for you, my brothers and sisters? Who do you say Jesus is for you? Is it defined by what other people say? Or is it defined for what he says he is? And we read what Johannes read in the Bible. What Pastor Johannes said was that he paid the price once and for all for our sins. And he promised us eternal life. That's what the Bible says about Jesus. That's what Jesus said about himself. He said, I, give, I put my life and I take it back. He has the power. Imagine that. Imagine the power of Jesus in our lives, what we can do for others. So I call you this morning to think about that. Listen to what others say, what others say about Jesus. Correct them if you can, gently. Say, well, maybe you're wrong. Jesus is not what you say it is. And how do you know? Oh, because I read his words. You wouldn't like to be 
misrepresented by somebody else. When people say, you said this, and I said, no, I didn't. Why are you saying that I said that? I didn't say that. And how do you feel? You feel offended, yeah? You want people to say what you said. You don't want people to make up stories about you. So think how Jesus feels when people say all this stuff about him. He doesn't like it. But he has asked his church, his people, to tell the people who are saying those things, you are wrong. The Bible says, and Jesus says, this, this, and that. Are you going to believe him, or are you going to believe somebody else? And that's the challenge today. Are we believing Jesus, the one from the Bible, or are we believing a made-up Jesus, a mock up Jesus, an invented Jesus, to suit our own ways? <clears throat> Let us pray.